Good morning. Welcome, Kara. Um, thanks so much for presenting this morning. Um, please take it away. All right. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for this brief overview of the Foundation Directory Online. This is a database that allows us to research grant makers, grants, and uh, look at different grants that have been successfully awarded to uh, organizations like yours in our area in the past. So the reason that we are offering this service is because one of the results from last year's consulting survey that was sent out to public libraries was that 67% of respondents said that they would like to have resources and or training on how to increase funding through grant writing or library support groups. And so one of the ways that we can support that need is to provide some research support on grant makers and different grants that might be available to your library or a group like your friends or foundation that are supporting your library. And I'm going to walk you through the basics of what we have access to at the state library uh, in the foundation directory. And because of our license and the budget that we have available for this uh, resource this year, this is a resource that unfortunately we can't make available to everyone in the state, but we can search it here at the State Library. And so our request of you is if you would like us to do a search for you, you can send us some details about what you need. So things we need to know from you, who are you hoping to serve through this grant? So are there specific populations within your community? Are it children or seniors or veterans or a tribal community? Or is there a specific community that you want to reach out to through this grant program? And where are they? Well, that's probably going to be your library service area. So is it your, your city, your county? a district, a reservation, some area that you're hoping to serve specifically. What are you going to be doing for them? Is it an educational program? Is it some kind of additional resource that will meet a need in your community, like workforce development, something like that? And then finally, sometimes it's hard to answer this question, but if you have an idea of how much money you're going to need, that's really helpful in uh, looking for grant makers that would be a good match for filling those needs. So when you have those details on our State Library website, you can go into our knowledge base and submit a ticket. And we don't have a specific category for this setup quite yet, but under statewide projects, you can just click on submit a ticket and choose other. And then you can put grants or a grant request in the subject line and then Add those details here in the description and then just let us know how we can get a hold of you and hit submit and then we will schedule some time to do a research request for you using the foundation directory online some of the things that i will be looking for as i'm doing a search for you in foundation directory is do we meet this funder's requirements in terms of the organization, the library. Is that a good match for that grant make maker? Does your mission or your project uh, meet a priority for that grant maker? What is the size of the grant you're looking for? So one example is there's a group of libraries that would like to purchase defibrillators, AED machines for their libraries. They don't have one. And uh, I was looking for grants to buy maybe 40 of them, which would be tens of thousands of dollars. And so there's only so many grant makers that can fulfill that kind of request. But there are lots more grant makers that might be willing to award a couple thousand dollars to an individual library to purchase something like that. And so there's a couple different ways that we can approach that funding need as a group or as an individual. So knowing what size grant we're looking for is really important in doing our search. Uh, we can look at what kind of grants a grant maker has given out in the past to have an idea of, is this a good match for us? And then finally, uh, do we know anybody who 
is associated with this grant maker. And especially among Montana grant makers, that's always a good possibility that you might know somebody who knows somebody who works there or has got a, a grant from that grant maker. So um, those are all good things to know. So foundation directory. As I said, we have a license for internal use for this year. We'll be evaluating the use of this resource and maybe in the future, we might be able to justify extending this license for now. This is how we are using it. So we can be your gopher for information requests that you'd like to run through this database. And Foundation Directory Online is a database that has information about over 240,000 grant makers. There is information about more than 2 million recipients of grants, and there are more than 4 million grants added annually in a wide variety of topics. And this provides all sorts of information about the profiles of those grant makers, the details about the grants, and the details about the recipients, and that it's updated on a daily basis. And the data sources include grant maker websites, uh, tax forms, annual reports, federal government grants, and other publicly available information that is aggregated in this in this database. So let's let's do a search to show you what it looks like. So we're going to start here at the start screen, and I usually start by going straight into the advanced search filters. You can do a keyword search here, as it gives you some examples here. But when I click on advanced, uh, sorry, advanced search filters, it gives me these additional ways to narrow my search. Subject area, that's always really helpful. And so like an example of a search that I did recently was for uh, the AED mach machines. And another one was for capital improvements. It seems like there's um, a, a large need in our state for improvements to existing library buildings. And so if we were doing a search like that, you can see that it gives you some uh, categories that you can you can browse, but you can also do a keyword search and and it will give you some suggestions. So if I'm looking up, uh, nope, not capital punishment. We are looking for construction improvements or Okay, we can try that. Um, academic or geographic focus. We start out looking for Montana and you don't even have to put in a geographic focus if you want to look at nationwide grants, but we're, we might be more successful if we are targeting grant makers that have a special interest in serving Montana. So for now, we will put that in here. Population serve, this is where we, we would be putting in um, your audience if you're specifying this is a program for children or whoever you're wanting to serve specifically. And if you had a specific grant maker in mind, we could, we could put them in here as well. We can also just search for them directly. A location of grant maker, maybe you want to look in Montana and don't want to look further afield, you can do that. And then if you know somebody serving in the organization, you can put them in here. Um, so support strategy can be useful if we know, okay, there's capital infrastructure and there are subcategories there. So these are all things that might be of interest. We want to find uh, funding opportunities to fund some of these things. Type of monetary support. Usually people want cash or you know, just money to do a program, but you can also look for scholarships, you can look for grants and loans and um, promissory notes, but we'll probably leave that even pro bono services. You can leave that blank. Organization type, again, you can, you can, you can get pretty specific in these searches, but we kind of just leave that open. I do tend to narrow down the, the years that, uh, awards were given because something that was awarded 20 years ago may not be relevant to us today. So I'm kind of looking in the last four or five years. And then the grant amount, look, you can go up to like 10, $10 billion. <laughs> You're probably not going to be seeking a grant that large, but you can narrow that down if, uh, 
if you want. But and actually, instead of construction, because I've already identified the support strategy I want is capital and infrastructure, I'm going to put libraries in here. And I'm going to hit search. And so I have a list of 37 grant makers, 70 grants that were given in this subject area, 45 recipients. So some people received this grant more than once and then all the tax forms. So I wanted to, to go through those. And so this is where you can really get into some, some detail. If you hover over uh, the name of the grant maker, it's gonna give you just a quick overview, like the Rapp Family Foundation, gives you an idea of the size of the foundation, its assets, and the areas of interest uh, it has in what kind of grants it gives out. And then when you move along the line here, you see, okay, this, this foundation is based in Hamilton. This is how much they've given out. This is the amount that they funded in this specific subject area. So about 61,000 and then the number of grants. And so if I click on that, it's gonna tell me specifically who got those grants. Okay, so kind of uh, Ravali County. So what that looks like. And that gives you an idea of would I be eligible for this grant or not. And so then at this point, we have some options. So if you were requesting information about this search, I want to know who in Montana is funding capital and infrastructure improvements for libraries. I could export this grant maker list so I can go into view all. And some of these are probably going to be more relevant to you than others, but uh, that might be something that you or your grant person would get into once I send you the list. So we can export this list. I'm going to select all of those and send you a detailed spreadsheet with all the contact information. Probably, you're probably not seeing it on my, I dragged it into my screen, but you probably don't see it. I probably have to share it, but it gives you the contact information and kind of basically all the details that are, that you see here on the screen. And if you looked at that and said, well, I'd really like to know more about the Montana Community Foundation. Could you send me a profile of the Montana Community Foundation? I can click on Montana Community Foundation. It'll take me to their profile page. And it's gonna give me a lot of good details. Uh, I've got the website, I've got their LinkedIn site. I can get their contact info. There's, even, there's an assessment tool where you can assess whether it's a, a good match for the grant you're looking for. And then it tells you kind of a, it gives you a nice dashboard about what subject areas are they funding and in what amount. And then you can always drill down to, okay, here are all the, grants that they've given out in these different areas. I'm going to return to at a glance. Where is this money going? Well, the darker shaded states are receiving the most funds. So Montana is kind of their target because they're the Montana Community Foundation. And so you can see they've given out over a thousand grants. It looks like they have several repeat recipients and they've given out 17 and a half million dollars. And then what's really helpful here is you can see how the size of the grants that they tend to give out. So usually about between five and $10,000. So not super enormous grants, but pretty good, pretty good size grant. And that can give you a good sense of whether that's a good match for your project or not. And then you can get as much detail as you want, really. You can see what kind of grants they received. So in 2022, for example, the Yellowstone Historic Center in West Yellowstone received $10,000. And you can, anything that is hyperlinked, you can get more details. So I click on that. And then I can see, well, just kind of some overview um, details about that grant. So it was an archival project. And so if you had an archival project, 
you could say, oh, well, I wanted to do something like that. Maybe I would be a good match for this, this grant maker. So all, and all of this stuff is also available to export. So basically you want a list of grant makers. If you want a profile of a specific grant maker, all of this is exportable from this database and we can download or email these results to you. What else? Other details we can tell you about the grant maker. We can, we can get their financials. We can find out, uh, are they accepting applications? And this will tell you, you probably have to go to their website. In some cases it will tell you, okay, they are reviewing applications three times a year. So that's good to know if you have a tight timeline, you're looking for something to be fun in the next couple of months, maybe that's not the best match for you. And just getting those details can help you to narrow down that list of 40 grants. Going back to that initial search results page. Again, I can get the grant maker list. I can get the list of the 70 grants that fall in this area. I can view that list and I can export that list. And you can see the, the grant amount. Okay, somebody received $800,000, somebody received $10,000, a wide range, and you can get it as much detail as you want about any of these grants. And then you can also see who were the recipients. Were they similar to my library? Okay, the Imagine If Library Foundation, Historical Society. So um, looks like several different library foundations receive grants from this organization, as well as other um, nonprofit and government agencies and universities. So maybe pretty similar might be a good match. And this also tells you how many grants the Imagine If has received uh, six awards in the amount of $51,000 over time from the Montana Community Foundation. So that is kind of an overview of what we can retrieve from the Foundation Center online for you. Uh, another thing we can do is we can schedule time to review grant application drafts. And so far I've received a handful of research requests for specific grant topics. I haven't been asked to help anybody to prepare a grant application or read a grant application, but uh, I might be able to help with either of those tasks. But again, it needs to open a ticket and I would probably need at least a month of lead time before the grant application deadline to schedule time for that. And one reason for that is most of us at the State Library are partially funded with federal funds that do not allow us to participate in grant seeking activities. And so I would have to use my state funded time on these activities. So like this webinar that I'm doing is, is on my state funded time. And so we absolutely want to help support this need and want to help you with your requests and to build a case for continuing the subscription if it is useful to libraries. So we'd like to see some successful proposals come out of the subscription. So don't hesitate to open a ticket, let us know what your goals are and what kind of funding you're looking for. Are there any questions? Kara, I have a question. This is Colleen. Mm -hmm. So just to recap, um, if someone is going to submit a ticket to have you do the research um, on grant sources and that, what are like the three thing pieces of information that you need them to write down and be prepared to put into that ticket uh, to help you get started? We'd like to know what is your goal? What are, you know, the outcomes that you would like to see as a result of receiving this funding. And the more specific you can get on that, the better. In general, grant makers don't 
really want to, to fund ongoing needs. So understandably, we'd all like to have more in our general operating budget, but if there's a specific kind of time bound measurable project that you're looking to fund, that would be great to know all the details on that project. We'd like to know if there's a specific audience that you are trying to serve through this project, such as children or seniors or workforce, um, you know, any kind of uh, specific audience that would be served would be, that would be good to know about. And then if you have an idea of how much funding you're looking for, and that can be pretty vague, if you know, it's going to be under $10,000, that's good to know. If it's, if you think it's going to be a pretty large, um, like capital improvements can be tens of thousands of dollars, that's good to know as well. So, so amount of money, audience and outcomes. Those are the things we really like to know to start out with. And then this can be a conversation as we kind of start that search for you. I'll send you a spreadsheet with some grant makers and ask if you want any more details or if you have more details to narrow down that search and we'll just uh, try to get you what you need from that reference request. And Carrie, you'd mentioned too that, you know, just for folks to expect about a 30 day lead time. Did I hear that correctly? Yes, that's just so I can make sure that to schedule time to be able to do a good search for you and not have you wondering why I haven't got back to you. Well, thank you for your time and Please reach out if you have questions or if you'd like to get started with a research request, a grant maker request, or any questions about grants, we'd be happy to chat with you. Thank you, Kara. I did put a link to our evaluation form. We appreciate your feedback on these sessions. Um, and just to let everyone know that we will have the recording for the session available in our YouTube channel, uh, and you can claim credit for it by logging into Aspen and looking for this event on November the 3rd. So thanks so much, Kara and Nikki and Kathy for joining us this morning. Um, we hope you'll join us again in just another few weeks. We have more programming coming up, uh, Tiny Tech Session, and um, so thanks so much for being with us.